Genshin Impact has a fair few problems, ranging from some combat issues such as the action plus tab target hybrid combat style it uses, parts of the UI not being thought out properly, and bad placement of some markers on the map, just to name a few. In this video, my goal is to address some of these that I feel fall under the this is common sense and thus should be in the game category. The aim isn't to, you know, ridicule the game, it's to identify the problem and see how it impacts the players, then provide an easy solution to the so-called problem. So let's start this off. We'll start on something easy, the UI. Some parts of the game's UI are extremely polished and a good example of this is the character screen. This screen does exactly what it is meant to in an aesthetically pleasing yet highly informative way. It shows you all your characters, their stats, artifacts, talents, and constellations, with everything being labeled accordingly, and one of the most important things is how it feels to interact with. When you click on anything in the character screen, you get what you wanted. You are showed everything you need without an extra button press or a prompt. A bad example of this is any type of purchasing window. While all the shop menus are descriptive enough, using them is the most painful thing I've experienced since I tried leveling a character on the launch of Shadowlands, which was not fun. So here's how it works. You open up the shop menu and you are greeted with a list of everything you can buy. You click on an item that you want to purchase, be it, let's say, wheat in this example. You click on it and then you click the purchase button in the bottom right hand corner. But then the game prompts you, do you want to confirm your purchase? Now I'm no genius, but buying wheat shouldn't feel like I'm buying 50,000 shares of Amazon. Just let me do a one button transaction, please. And on top of this very annoying two-factor authentication method of buying wheat in a video game, you have to do this for every item. There is no mass buy option or select which items and how much you want. What you're seeing right now is the shop menu of the newly released Scarlet Nexus published and developed by Bandai Namco. This menu feels so nice to use, you can select how much of each item you want to purchase and when you click the OK button, you get an order overview, the cost, and then you can confirm. But then you hop over to Genshin and you have to purchase each and every item individually, double confirming everything, developing carpal tunnel syndrome just from trying to buy cooking ingredients. The clunkiness is almost stupefying as you sit there purchasing items like a robot. I highly recommend a system like or similar to something in Scarlet Nexus. Let's jump on to the second problem which just drives me up the wall sometimes and makes me wish I was actually playing Shadowlands so I can actually mount. It's the odd placement of certain waypoints in conjunction with the location of bosses and ley lines. Some waypoints in the game are placed so well that the player can get to bosses and ley lines relatively quickly, but you don't spawn directly at your destination. What I would call a too good to be true waypoint is the domain right next to the cryo regis mine or the waypoint right next to the cryo hypostasis. These waypoints spawn you right next to the boss and that's pretty much all you use these waypoints for. And then you look at the waypoints near the wolf boss. Oh look, it's so populated with waypoints. The closest waypoint is by the river, at the bottom of a massive cliff, so you have to climb this 90 degree wall which takes at least a minute. Now that might not seem like much, but having to do that once or twice a week if you play multiple accounts like myself, or even if you want to fight the wolf boss for damage testing. The frustration builds up, and this isn't even mentioning the whole concept of open world bosses versus domain bosses. Now, really quickly before I continue, you may be wondering, well then, what's the solution? Just put a waypoint on every boss and make the game a loading screen simulator? No, definitely not. The problem I'm pointing out is how large the difference between the two ends is. To get to certain bosses, you have to run four marathons and then you're only halfway there, while for other bosses, you spawn right beside them, practically commencing battle during the loading screen. But in the end, this is the minorest of minor problems. The fix would be so simple. Redo the position of waypoints so they are more compatible with the locations of bosses, so you have a bit of travel time, maybe a few monsters on the way, but nothing over the top. This will be a quick one. Let's talk bosses. <laughs> Currently in Genshin, there are four weekly domain bosses and a spattering of other world bosses as I'll call them. And then where this small spark of an issue comes into play is when you look at the wolf boss. He is one of the four weekly domain bosses, yet you fight him in the open world. Now here is where the annoyance comes into play. When you try to fight the other three domain bosses, be it the dragon, Tartaglia or Ajdaha, you interact with a door and can choose a difficulty. Well, for the wolf boss, he scales off of your world level, so you can't control the loot or difficulty, or at least not very well. 
This all boils down to a minor inconsistency where certain aspects of the game aren't following a theme or keeping consistent. And what this does to the player is moderately discourage them from doing or completing that minor inconsistency. I personally don't kill the wolf boss often, and this is due to the combination of that marathon you have to run to get there, and then also the lack of control for loot and difficulty. Now, just to clarify, I am looking at this problem much like the map markers, in that it is in a comparative way. Thinking, why can I teleport to these bosses directly, but that one I have to run to when they share the same loot pool, the only difference being the actual fight. The quickest fix would be just to continue making weekly reset bosses operate in a domain, because by no means do I expect the devs to revisit any of the old content too often. Okay, let's wrap this up. The general idea I'm trying to get across is that quality of life changes go a long way. Some of that we know that are coming in 2.0 are the addition of the gardening to the teapot making it overall easier to get any type of plant, or the epitomized fate addition to the weapon banner, and these changes have had an overall positive feedback and are extremely welcomed by a majority of players. And this makes me excited to know they are making changes for the players. They are listening and willing to add mechanics to make the gaming experience a more enjoyable, but more importantly, an unforgettable one. Thanks for watching everyone, so this is a new style of video. I used a script for this one, and as I don't do that too often, it might not be the best out there, but I'm going to try it and do more of these types of videos to get more information across more accurately. Again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and if you enjoy this debate slash discussion driven style of video, be sure to smash that subscribe button. Have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.